the best climbing performance of the year and Avonapol's best ever by far, and you might have missed it, Tour of Norway Stage 3, Johannesson in the leader's jersey, about a second ahead of Avonapol, 14 ahead of Plaps, 16 or so ahead of Vine. They're going to do a hard mountaintop finish on Stage 3. We've had crosswinds yesterday. This is the Stavs Row climb, 12k, 7.5%, but that belies its difficulty. It's actually about 9 kilometers. The climb proper at over 9 or around 9%. And we have Ineos with the strongest team in this race, Avonapol. Not in the leader's jersey, it's Johannesson in the leader's jersey. So it was on Uno X to control the early days breakaway, and Alpsen got to tier in there, so they didn't have to really do anything. And they get to this open plateau again after a climb. And Ineos are like, let's full send it with Luke Rowe once again. Crosswinds, even a pull you can see on Asgren's wheel. And if you are in bad position at this point, you are in big trouble. Although it's with 73 Ks to go. And yeah, Ineos full send it. They got their whole squad. Amador, Rowe, Plapp, Hater, Gagenhart, Sheffield in the front split. Even a pull there on Asgren's wheel. And Chavez, who you see deeper with EF. He's really been put under pressure and struggled in the crosswinds the last few days, and EF definitely need his points from GC, and it was carnage. And only in Norway, it seems, you have these crosswind-exposed plateau-extended sections after pretty hard climbs, and they had to do 5.3 watts per kilo, or riders had to do, to, for 30 minutes to make the first echelon today, which is really hard for the middle of the stage, particularly when it's up and down. That's not just a climb. The problem for Ineos was EF were chasing hard. Do they want to keep it going for 60 kilometers? They had Vine in the group, Johannesson in the group, Utebrooks in the group, Avonapool in the group. They hadn't really dropped the majority of the GC contenders, so they let it come back. EF came back and Uno X paced to the base of the climb. And then even at the base of it with James Shaw doing a stellar job, the new recruit who came from Ribble last year, did well at the Tour of Slovenia, and he lit up the base of this climb going for Esteban Chavez. But it was Gagan Hart attacking early. Ineos actually didn't have, well, they don't have a lot of good climbers in this race, although Sheffield's quite good, but they have no domestiques left in the group. So they opt to attack with Gagan Hart, put the other teams under pressure rather than just pacing with Gagan Hart. Bevan... It's harder than Tour of Turkey here. He's put under pressure and dropped early on this climb. And it's Chavez who attacks with 8.4 Ks to go, perhaps guilty of underestimating his opposition on this climb. That's really early to go. He's got Avonapool in the wheel, Plap, Johannesson, and it's Vine that counters, and Avonapool calls everyone's bluff. He's not chasing immediately with 8 Ks to go. And it's Chavez responding with Johannesson in the wheel. So even Johannesson perhaps surging when he didn't need to, even a pull closing to his wheel with Plap, and then eventually, 7.4 k's to go, a bit of finessing starts, and it's actually Vine looking around at the wrong time, even a pull wiggling around, getting his back well, nearly chopping Vine, Vine makes it back, no one attacked, and actually, this is when they take some refreshments, and you might be wondering, why is Avonapol reaching for a gel and Vine having a gel with 7.2 k's to go with not that long to the finish, maybe 20 minutes, 17 minutes. And if you actually do a mouth rinse with and you hold the glucose or the sugar in your mouth at this point in the race, it can, even if you don't absorb it in your gut or don't have time to, it can still have a benefit. So that's the key. I think we've seen Bernal doing that before with much closer to the finish. Vine attacks again, and now even a pole responds, and it's business time. No longer will he sit back and allow other riders to close his gaps. He goes to the front. Brrrr, he ratchets this pace up to an infernal level. He drops Chavez, Hoyes, Utebrooks, who's like 18 years old, so crazy performance from the young guy. But he drops them very quickly. 6.2 Ks to go. Drops Johannesson, who's older than Remco Evenepoel, by the way. Last year's Tour de Lavenir winner. Don't forget that. Remco's younger than him. He flicks Plap through. He said there was a bit of a headwind point when he was pulling, but he continues anyway. And eventually he's going to put Plap and Vine under such pressure that he, we didn't see the attack. It was actually off screen, but the pacing he was doing, like seven watts per kilo for a five minute period or plus, maybe higher during this race was insane. And with five Ks to go, he goes solo with a couple of Ks left of the really steep part of this climb. And this is the best ever climbing performance we've seen from Avonapol. The concerns that maybe the crash in Il Lombardia meant he wouldn't come back or he doesn't do well on the steep gradients like in Valenciana and Vine did an admirable job trying to close it here and getting back to his wheel. 
those fears of 99% been allayed. Now, maybe this isn't like 16% ramp ass in human ass. This is like a 9k, 9% climb. And the what's of the what's. You, I'm going to see the comments down below. Who did he beat? Who did he beat? It doesn't matter. Jan Hurt showed in Tour of Oman, Green Mountain. It doesn't matter. If you do the what's. And they're insane what's, by the way. Check the article pinned in the comments down below. It doesn't matter. He did 6.5 watts per kilo, we've calculated, for 30 minutes. Completely what the fuck. And like 6.85 watts per kilo for 15 minutes. Now, maybe we're underestimating his aero. You see, compared to Vine on this plateau afterwards, although we did it just for the steep section, and Platt's probably looking at his head unit like, are you kidding me? Look at what, what, what I'm doing. How am I getting dropped right now? And yeah. That seems to be the sensation. So yeah, Remco obviously has this incredible aero advantage, but like Vine put his data up, and it's just a crazy performance. It's the best performance, climb performance in cycling this year. It doesn't matter that it's not at the Giro d'Italia, and Vine's performance as well. Completely insane performance. Remember, Vine's close to 70 kilos too on this climb. But Remco Evenepoel was the star of the day. Vuelta Espana against the Slovenians. I am hyped. It's got... Long, shallowish climb, high fives all around. That is something we have to tune into. Tour de Swiss, actually, they're coming up later. Vine loss under 30 seconds. Plap rounding out the Australian 2 3 on the podium, lost around a minute, but still. Ineos have got a strong team. They all got some other stages to try. Johannesson losing 121. Hoist 121. Really nice performance from him. Chavez lost 124. Here's Remco Avenapool's Watts and Vine's Watts. Absolutely mental. Check the article, as I said, on lanternroof.com.au. Here's what he had to say after the stage. I didn't uh, know what, how many K to go uh, when I attacked, but uh, I mean, it was a tailwind, so uh, the powers that I pushed, uh, the other guys also have to push it to follow with the, the tailwind. So that made it uh, like kind of a strong attack, and uh, I was actually quite surprised that I could hold my, uh, my attack up for quite a long time. Uh, also, when uh, I think Plep and Vine were in my wheel, I was still pushing quite hard, but it was headwind, so that made it a bit more difficult for me. But then uh, the moment I actually rode away from the guys, it was crosswind, so uh, I actually used the wind there to uh, try to make it a bit harder for the others. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, I was a bit... Uh, I mean, I was not too sure uh, with my advantage of uh, Andre Vine, the last couple of k's of the really steep, cl of the steep climb. So then uh, I actually like kind of pushed a bit harder again because uh, I wanted to be sure uh, to win with kind of a, I mean, with a, a bigger advantage. Uh, and then, yeah, the rolling part was still really difficult with the tailwind. Uh, it made it really hard to uh, to keep pushing because uh, it was a big and uh, very long effort. So, uh, but I think I'm really happy and the team can be really happy with what we what we show today again. But big gaps on GC for Tour of Norway. Evenepoel 46 seconds ahead of Vine, Platon 124. But as I said, Ineos, they got the best team here. I would expect them to try in any situation, medium mountain, tricky climbs, tricky parkour, crosswinds. They will try. Watch out for that in the next three stages of Tour of Norway. Hope you enjoyed the video. Is Remco Evenepoel cleaning up the Vuelta Espana? Let me know your thoughts down below and see you tomorrow. Ciao.